Tropical Storm Chantal is about to hit the game board. We have TD3 out there now, and I'm here to bring you the latest on what to expect as this system continues to strengthen and move in during the 4th of July weekend. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everyone. Even though we're clearly not in the Weather Center today, no, I'm going to be away for the weekend, spending time with family and extended relatives enjoying the 4th of July holiday, despite the tropics trying to cause some trouble for us here in the southeast, expected to extend into the mid-Atlantic. We're going to talk all about that today. We have Tropical Depression 3 that has officially hit the game board and is forecast to take on name storm characteristics within the next 12 hours, claiming the third name storm of the season, that being Chantal. I also want to get into some of the details surrounding why I'm out of the Weather Center. That's going to be the song and dance almost this entire month, folks. So bear with me if it seems like we've gone to a bit more of a primitive setup, if the audio doesn't sound as good, if the camera angle looks a little goofy, or the backdrop, you know, I'm doing my best. Going to be in Norfolk for about a week and a half, almost two weeks, training with the Navy, doing the weather gig up there. I've got conferences at the very tail end of the month, so I'm not really going to be at home base for a while. So if you are brand new to the channel, I promise we have higher quality content than this, but I don't want to just lapse and forget the channel altogether because I'm traveling, whether it be for work, leisure. In this case, right now, it's leisure, but for the rest of the month, I would say for the next three and some weeks, to tell you the truth, until we get ready for August, the peak of the hurricane season, I'm really not going to be at home base, so bear with me. But we're going to talk tropics. We're going to get you the information that you need regardless. We've got a lot going on. Again, TD3 is out there right off the southeast coastline looking a lot healthier than some of us were initially anticipating. So thank you so much for taking some time out of your 4th of July. I hope you've had a fantastic holiday so far and continue to do so through the weekend despite any kind of treacherous or inclement weather that you may have going on in your area. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe. I promise regardless of what I have going on, I will be right here wherever it is I take the mobile weather center to get you the information that you need and that you're expecting on a regular basis. Give that like button a little nudge. Let's share this information with those you believe would benefit from it and drop me a comment down below. Let me know how your 4th of July is going. If you were expecting this system to look as organized and healthy as it does or if you were kind of voting it off given the characteristics it had leading up to today. I'm personally glad we've been pushing the information we have. We've been talking Tropical Storm for a while, and it looks like National Hurricane Center post-reconnaissance aircraft is on the same page. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. National Hurricane Center's homepage. There it is. Tropical depression number three. Max sustained winds currently at 35 miles an hour. Central pressure a little on the high side, 1,012 millibars. And it is racing along at a whopping two miles an hour to the north. It's taking its sweet time. It is no kidding marinating over the Gulf Stream waters, the very hot waters out there, just off the coastline of upper Florida, Georgia, right around where we were anticipating this try to consolidate between the Florida Georgia state line. And it is forecast to become a tropical storm here very soon. You can see right now we're still sitting at a pretty high end tropical depression. The low level circulation is fairly broad per ASCAT and the reconnaissance team doing their data, pulling in that information. To the aircraft that's been circling the storm. I'm pretty sure they're done as of recording this video. They're going to be going back out again tomorrow afternoon, so we'll give it another 24 hours over open water. And then by 2 p.m. on Saturday, somewhere in between the overnight hours of tonight into your Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, is when we should see Tropical Storm Chantal hit the board. We already have the Tropical Storm watches in effect for portions of South Carolina. They are likely going to extend them further into the southern periphery of North Carolina, just as we were anticipating. We've been talking potential tropical cyclone as the floor scenario for this event. And because of the fact it's looking a little bit more symmetrical. I'm saying a little bit because it's not a perfect storm, not a perfect tropical cyclone by any means. We had to go through a bit of an emotional roller coaster trying to get this thing on the board. At first, NHC was thinking subtropical depression. I didn't fully agree with that. Honestly, didn't agree with that at all. I'm glad we backpedaled on that. Then they hinted at a PTC, which, you know, okay, that was the, the floor 
event outcome that we were thinking previously leading up to today. And then they decided after passing through what they believe is a fairly aligned, not a optimally aligned mid-level and low-level circulation. They pulled the trigger and made this fully bonafide tropical, and I'm on board with that. It's not going to be a perfect system. This is homegrown by every means, but it is taking advantage of this small window of favorable opportunity to try to get going. And with that, Let's get you over to the satellite. We're going to spend a lot of time on the satellite because this is fairly impressive. You look at the system, and to tell you the truth, we are not all that lopsided. It does look like our mid-level circulation is very slightly displaced from what could possibly be a low-level circulation, although we've had some very generous thunderstorms firing within the mid-level vortex almost all day since we woke up this morning. And it's going to be very interesting to see what this thing does as we go back into what's called diurnal maximum tonight. You can see on the true color visible satellite, we're getting closer to sunset. The light is beginning to recede. And by about 10 to 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, that's when we will rock into that D-max phase where these systems tend to thrive. You lose a lot of that convective instability brought on by daytime heating around the storm. So as a result, the surface of the water beneath the clouds will remain insulated. You're not going to get a lot of that, you know, overnight cooling you typically get, say, over central Florida or wherever it is you reside. As we know, water has something called greater thermal inertia. It retains heat. It takes a lot longer to heat up, but when it does so, it keeps that heat trapped a lot longer than, say, a landmass. And as a result, this feature, this area of vorticity, it was very broad and elongated this morning. Once we got those showers and thunderstorms to really begin to fire over the greatest concentration of that vorticity, the rest is history. You can definitely see some really good westerly flow on the south side of it. You got your northerly flow on the east, easterly on the north, and then obviously there's your low-level cloud cover on the west there. You can see a little on the exposed side because we do have some dry air and some wind shear that it is still trying to battle over the southeast. United States, kind of right over top the Appalachians in the mid-Atlantic. So the fact that it's forward speed, it's right inside of a call, a neutral point in the winds. You've got your winds coming off the United States, winds coming up out of the Caribbean and the Gulf, winds coming in off the Atlantic, and then here as well, you're in a bit of a pinch zone. That's called a call. So that's why we don't have too much in the way of anything trying to give it a dramatic nudge in either direction. But rest assured, you know, I mean, unfortunately for our folks up there in the Carolinas, as you will be receiving this storm. It is going to continue to pull away from Georgia, Florida. You can see a lot of the wraparound moisture creating our afternoon thunderstorms for us down here in the Sunshine State, but it doesn't look like a full washout. From there, you can kind of see the upper level winds are really helping to appropriately ventilate this system. Look at how the clouds, the upper level cirrus here is racing off towards the northeast. That is your trough. If you kind of imagine a three-dimensional stack of the atmosphere, we are in that right front quadrant, that ejection of the jet stream winds helping to provide increased lift out ahead of this thing. And I feel like maybe that's why they wanted to do a subtropical designation at first, because it is getting a little nudge again from our jet stream from the long wave trough extending over the eastern United States. But out ahead of a trough, we usually have lift. On the back side of it, you get some sinking. So if you're right in front of a trough, that's where low pressures will typically begin to develop. You get more disturbed weather, like the severe weather we see over the plains. In this case, you've got the very hot shelf and Gulf Stream waters providing the thunderstorm action, and you're getting really good exhaust thanks to the trough and the higher level winds that are helping to accelerate, almost pulling the air out of the system. Now, that will be a detriment. As it slowly begins to lift further towards the north, it's going to run face first into that. So that's why we're not thinking any rapid intensification, any extensive development of this system. It is going to remain somewhat asymmetrical to the east side of the system. And that's kind of a good thing because that means outside of the immediate coastline, as this does lift into the Carolinas, we're not going to receive as hellacious of a full-fledged impact as it pulls inland. You can see here on the vorticity, it started out fairly elongated. We still have some of that spin and that energy draped back over the central Florida, southern Florida peninsula, but you're starting to see the shades of red really coming together where the mid and low level circulations are trying to align. We may not fully get there, and I think that is 
kind of what's preventing this from going more or less gangbusters because we've got the water to do it. If you look here, we are right in that favorable nook of low wind shear at almost all levels of the environment. There's your upper trough there, and you are smack dab in that favorable quadrant where that upper level influence is helping to pull that low level airflow, that rising motion from the thunderstorms, it's pulling it and helping to accelerate that. It's enhancing the lift as opposed to shearing it apart like we saw with Milton. This is kind of what we saw with Hurricane Ian back in 2022. NHC and a few other reputable sources were thinking it would weaken the hurricane before landfall, and it actually intensified it. Not saying we're going to go hurricane here. That is not my forecast, but it's actually working in our favor. Now we're going to rapid fire through some of the impacts. You can see here the HAFS models, I think once we get the recon data into the computer models, we'll do a little bit better. The HWARF did a fantastic job with Barry, for example, whereas the HAFS A and B suites didn't quite do very much with it. It showed just an elongated area of rainfall. It didn't really even show a consolidated low-pressure center. But you can see right along the immediate coast is where our more hefty squalls and thunderstorms are expected to move in. Because of that east side biased with this system, we're also going to see a bit more of the impacts into North Carolina, even if the center does come ashore somewhere in eastern, northeastern South Carolina. You can see a really good feed helping to pump in some really solid feeder bands into North Carolina, and they will continue to extend further towards the north as we go through your sun. Day. So conditions will slowly go downhill tomorrow. Fourth of July, if you're watching from the Carolinas in Virginia, you're looking pretty kosher right now. It's going to be tomorrow afternoon through the overnight hours of your Saturday into Sunday where things will start to go downhill. Conditions will deteriorate, as they usually say, before a landfalling tropical system. And I do think a max ceiling for this could be anywhere between 50, maybe even 60 miles an hour in the center, depending on how long it marinates down there, just like some of our proteins may have done leading up to your 4th of July barbecue if you're actually getting to take advantage of that today. Here's a look at your halves B. I'm going to use both of them just to kind of show a bit of the continuity we have between them, the consistency. And you can see as it slowly lifts away from Florida and Georgia, Right along the coast, you're going to have gusts anywhere between 35, 45, approaching 50 miles an hour per the first couple of runs of the HAFS models. Now, they've been discontinued for the time being since we did just upgrade the storm. This is before any reconnaissance data. This is before initializing current conditions. We could see even more pronounced model runs coming in. So kind of keep a little bit of an open mind. Once the computer models can assimilate, digest, kind of take in the information we plug into them with the aircraft circling the storm, especially again tomorrow once we get another feed of that information via the reconnaissance drop sons that they use. That's when we'll have a more cut and dried image of what's going to happen. But again, just like we were mentioning yesterday in our video, a lot of the impacts are going to be right along the shore. You can see here a really good corridor of tropical storm force winds there in the feeder banding and then right along the immediate east side of what you could consider an eye wall. Not really going to be an eye wall per se, but where that center is really more wrapped up, especially as we give it another 24, 30 hours over open water. As you get further inland over the Carolinas, over even portions of Georgia, extending further north as it does move inland, we're looking at on average more so just the general gradient winds with these low pressure systems, 20, maybe 30 miles an hour on occasion, nothing crazy, nothing that should knock out power. But with these sportier winds right up against the coastline, you don't want to be at the beach. And in fact, I would definitely think anywhere between four to eight foot swells right off the coast wrapping into the beach themselves could cause a little bit of beach erosion as well, especially since this feature is moving so slow. That's the kicker here. We could get a little bit of that coastal flooding, not only as a result of the swells, but because of that training rainfall that's going to be moving in on its north and eastern flood flank, the dirty side, if you will. Here's a look at the H wharf before we begin to wrap up, and you can see a lot of that heavier rainfall is going to be moving into North Carolina. The H wharf, I did notice, actually does bring it more so closer to 
eastern North Carolina kind of misses South Carolina altogether. We'll have to wait and see. Let me see if we've gotten an update on our track ensembles at all real fast since we've gone through the upgrade. There you go. There you have it. So you can see a large conglomerate of them are bullseyeing South Carolina moving right into north. And then pretty much where I'll be come July 8th, moving right over Chesapeake Bay, the Norfolk, Virginia area. I will have missed it by that much. I'm kind of okay with that, and you can kind of see right there, it might be hard for you to see, but that little purple line there is our H-Wharf model, kind of taking it a bit further towards the right there, so we'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, I wanted to show you the rainfall totals because we have trended back in portions of Florida and Georgia as this event unfolds. You can see as it lifts towards the north, going through your Saturday, and then Sunday as we prepare for landfall, that is when through Monday, again, we keep our heaviest accumulations on the east side of the system before it really quickly diminishes because this is going to remain a somewhat disorganized system. It looks pretty good on satellite, better than what our long-range, lower-resolution global models were predicting. But even down here in the state of Florida, you can see by Tuesday, we're looking at maybe an inch to two inches compounding on what's already fallen. So some of you may have more total rainfall for the last seven days, but in regards to TD3, soon to be Tropical Storm Chantal, it won't be that impressive. And a large majority of us, as you get closer to the leeward side of the Appalachians and much of interior in northern Georgia, we're going to have trace amounts of rainfall from this. So again, the coastline is where the brunt of your tropical storm conditions are likely to occur. And then naturally, we want to watch for the tornadic conditions if this feature does try to strengthen just a little bit more. Some of that wraparound moisture I showed you for the Carolinas and North Carolina more so than anyone could have some occasional tornado warnings. They may even issue a tornado watch as well because those warm waters are going to help to reinvigorate some of those thunderstorm complexes out ahead of the system before it makes landfall. All right, and there you have it. A little abbreviated out of shop weather center update. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And thank you very much for all your generous support. We're already almost to 16,000 subscribers. Means a tremendous amount that you all entrust me with your weather information, especially during situations like this where we've been on the ball. We've been seeing some pretty decent success. So knock on wood, praise the Lord, we'll continue to bring you the information Information that you need. So again, if you've watched to the end, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me and the rest of us here in the weather centric community. Share this information, give that like button a little nudge, and we'll see you again very soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.